And let us uh, now move to the next speaker of the day. Uh, we bring to you Dr. Muhammad Mujahidul Islam, Executive Director, Marketing and Sales, SK Pharmaceuticals, Bangladesh. He's a medical doctor turned pharma marketeer with a mission to help patients in finding better treatment, cure, and quality of life. Currently holds the position of executive director, sales and marketing. Working for a number of years for SKF Pharmaceuticals, one of the top tier companies in pharma industry in Bangladesh. In progressive marketing career, he has played lead role in building many power brands, executed many successful business projects in different therapeutic segments, and led the company's phenomenal business growth journey in the industry and ensured companies profit and loss. Let me tell you about SKF. It is an organization of 6,500 plus professionals and it is the successor of former SKNF USA having global footprint in 54 countries. Over to you, Dr. Mujahidul. Thank you, Dr. Swati. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. At the very beginning, I want to thank uh, Pharma State Academy, Chief Mentor Vivek Sir, Dr. Swati and everyone for organizing this wonderful and uh, time demanding Pharma Summit. And also I'm thankful for inviting me to speak on a particular topic. And um, I think uh, this is a very time demanding uh, initiative, a Pharma Brand Summit on patient-centric marketing, and I'm extremely humbled and privileged to get the learning experience from today's keynote speaker from Canada. And also, I look forward to learning from the industry stalwarts and leaders from South and South in, Southeast Asian pharma industry. So with this note, uh, let me share my presentation. So I am actually from Bangladesh. Uh, uh, it's a small but beautiful country. Uh, in terms of population, uh, it is the eighth largest country in the world. And uh, this 2021, we are celebrating 50 years of independence of Bangladesh. The country Bangladesh, it is one of the fastest growing economies in the world today. Uh, Pre-COVID, Bangladesh had consistent 8% year-on-year GDP growth. Even in the last year, COVID year, the GDP growth was 5%. And even Asian development, they are projecting in 2021, also they are projecting 6% plus GDP growth uh, for Bangladesh. Uh, so the main, if I talk about export, the main industry that is dominating today is ready-made garments. Bangladesh is the second largest ready-made garment exporter to, in the world today. And pharma is also coming up. We have many pharma companies uh, we, we, which all the leading companies, they are exporting to more than 100 countries across the globe. Most of the leading countries have accreditations, prestigious accreditations from the stringent regulators of the world. And also we have um, collaboration with many MNCs from different corners of the world. So I believe pharma is also another industry that has a tremendous prospect for Bangladesh. Today, in terms of our domestic medicine needs, we are almost self-sufficient but uh, we believe after meeting the domestic needs, we have a tremendous opportunity to explore the global market as well. I am from Escape Pharmaceuticals. Uh, it is one of the most ethically acclaimed and top tier pharma companies in Bangladesh. We are a generic pharmaceutical company. We are engaged in manufacturing and marketing of pharmaceutical finished products and animal health products. We have our global footprints across 54 countries in the world. How pharma companies can help create delight at every stage of patient journey. That's my topic of discussion today. So there are three components here. The pharma companies, we the pharma companies, and how can we create delight and the different stages of patient journey. So let's first look at the pharma companies and their traditional marketing pattern. In the whole ecosystem of pharmaceutical, on one side, there is pharmaceutical companies, and on the other side, there is customers. And the key role is played by physicians, patients, and chemists. 
So this is an inside out strategy where the, the, the promotional approach is actually brand centricity. Uh, now the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical promotional approach may vary from country to country. Like Bangladesh is a branded generic market. From my country perspective, I think uh, uh, almost many of the countries are mainly prioritizing on promoting and selling the brands. That is, it is, it is a brand centric approach. And I think the same is true for many other countries of this part of the world also. But the companies mainly focus on developing and producing the medicines and through their field forces, they promote their brands to the physicians. Now the question is, how effective is this traditional pharma promotion with medical reps and detail aids in today's digital, digital world? We have huge number of generic drugs. Many pharma companies are operating today, thousands of brands. Medical reps are getting minimum time around a minute on an average or sometimes even less than that. Even sometimes digital contacts like uh, webinars have also no significance. And on the top of all of these, patient's voice is growing. That's why we say, that's why the need for this seminar today, that's why we say there is a need for, uh, to think for an improvement in the traditional uh, GTM or go to the market model. My previous speaker, Mr. Sanjeev, he also mentioned, he was, he was also saying not to consider, uh, to think about go to the market or the personal selling model from an effectiveness point of view. That's why uh, we all are thinking that time has come for a change. Now let's see what is on the other side of brand centricity. How can we actually deliver best patient outcomes? How can we be more patient centric? So we need to empower the patients. We need to frame the patients at the center of this ecosystem rather than at the end of the stream. So this is an outside in strategy that prioritizes mainly on offering the most appropriate and valuable solutions. This is how pharma companies and customers interact and transact to continue the proceedings forward. This is the next big differentiator in pharma marketing. And to do this, collaboration is essential between pharma companies with the healthcare professionals and with the patients to understand how pharma would come as a partner to be able to deliver best patient outcomes. I can share an example here. I was watching the story of an MNC and this company is offering innovative products to make patients' lives better since its inception. The company, just a couple of years back, they noticed that delivering innovative treatments and products, this is not enough actually to bring best patient out outcomes. So ultimately what they started, they started collaboration with the healthcare providers and also with the patients to be more patient centric and to achieve best health outcomes. I know I can understand that even uh, listening from the from our keynote speaker and also from my previous speaker that this might sound uh, like a dream in a country like Bangladesh or to some extent in a country like India, where in our traditional pharma industry, we are mainly going to the physicians first. In fact, the whole healthcare system has been around the physicians. So it would be really interesting to move on to engaging with the disease experience experts, the patients. So we need to involve the healthcare practitioners and the patients in our product planning, in our strategic meetings and in our tactical meetings. It's like a team where the patient may be considered as the coach, as the coach of the team and the strategies can be designed accordingly. So what I'm trying to say is that instead of developing our yearly marketing plan or while rolling out of our new information or our new brochures inside the closed office room, what we can do, we can engage with patients or patient organizations and healthcare practitioners as well to help us create healthier stories. That's our path in creating delight in the patient's journey. So once we, once we have engaged all the stakeholders, then next while making our investment decisions, we will see what are the benefits to the patients? What are the benefits to the healthcare provider? And what's the benefit to my company, to my brand? 
And accordingly, we can apply filter and we can make investment decisions at the different stages of a patient's journey. And to do that, understanding of patient's journey is very important. Patient's journey actually starts uh, before someone becomes ill. So the first stage I will say is wellness and prevention. Many pharma companies today focus on wellness products, uh, the products for preventing the disease. So I will say that their job starts with a healthy person. And then thereafter, with the appearance of symptoms, a patient's journey starts that follows diagnosis and then treatment and finally recovery. Now, once we know what are the stages of patient's journey, which might be slightly different for different, different therapeutic areas. And the next piece actually that we want to understand is who are the influencers uh, in course of the patient's journey? Because those influencers along the way could come in to help us to understand what things actually we need to deliver to people and to patients. Accordingly, when we, we the pharma companies can provide solutions at every stage of the patient's journey, it will ultimately support the healthcare providers to deliver better decision, to take better decisions and to deliver better healthcare and to save lives. Now, let me share a few examples of uh, pharma companies in the path of creating delight in, in different, different stages of a patient's journey. I want to start from the stage of awareness. In this digital world, technology has opened actually the door to engage with patients in many different ways, like, uh, uh, like health awareness programs, like uh, disease awareness programs, uh, like even patient awareness programs where, where patients with chronic diseases uh, can share their life experiences, their insights. And this is how not only other patients, just a couple of minutes back, we heard uh, Dr. Swati was inter in interacting with a patient and she even she was also advising that uh, uh, we the pharma companies can organize um, uh, through, through this digital world, can organize e events where patients can also share their experience and their insights. This is how pharma companies also may get many inputs ultimately to, uh, to create better health outcomes. And also awareness programs can be uh, organized by, by advertorials as well. So once the patients are diagnosed with a particular disease or, or, or a chronic disease like Parkinson's disease or, or, or diabetes or cancer, so uh, the next thing, patients are turning into the internet to support their understanding. And why? Because there are knowledge gaps. And, and during that time, if we, the pharma companies, if we are unable to address their needs, what will happen ultimately, the patients will go to some other platform and ultimately the patients will learn. So if we can create a navigator where people can go online and ask their questions and get information so that they can go back and they can have necessary discussion with their healthcare providers. So this is a direct engagement between the pharma companies and the patient. And this engagement can be, can be done through healthcare, healthcare practitioners as well. Like, let me share an example of a patient-centric app for physicians. Again, that can be applied during the stage of a diagnosis of a patient. For example, uh, a newly diagnosed diabetic patient. They have very little information about the, about the disease once, once they are diagnosed. So, and we know that diabetes is a, is, it's a chronic disease. It's a progressive disease. So patients must have a thorough understanding, thorough knowledge about the disease, about their, modif uh, about their medications, and also what are the lifestyle modifications uh, they should bring in in their life. So this app can be a free app for the medical practitioners to download. And essentially it can be a teaching tool that might allow the doctors to, to uh, have the slides and infographics so that they can actually counsel a patient during a visit to the chamber. And uh, a further innovative feature can be added to, to this app like uh, this conversation can be recorded and the doctor can email that recording to the patient so that the patient can go back and, and she can, he or she can listen to it. Further, further you, can, you can actually see, we the market, from marketing uh, uh, perspective, we can see how many healthcare practitioners have downloaded the app or, or from which cities they have downloaded. And accordingly, you can strategize your brand is investment and uh, planning strategies. 
Another classic example of putting patient-centered approach into practice I can share is this deep program that is Disease Experience Expert, Expert People Program by Novo Nordisk. This program is for the individuals suffering from the for, suffering with the chronic diseases like diabetes or obesity. So in this framework, people with chronic diseases are no longer seen as passive recipients of healthcare. Actually, they are disease experience experts. So through sharing their valuable insights, they, they can help us improve the future of healthcare. Now next, uh, uh, during this COVID pandemic, when, when we all of us, we are worried about, uh, especially in Bangladesh, and I know in India also, we all are worried about the sudden peak of uh, COVID cases. We are concerned about the efficacy of the vaccine and uh, what, what should be the right in interval between the two doses of vaccines. So once we are concerned, one unique thing has ha happened, and that is a digital revolution. So that's why even during this extremely difficult time, digital technology has, has helped us to think about the patients suffering from chronic diseases. What can we do uh, uh, for their lifestyle modification even during this lockdown, lockdown period? Maybe, maybe um, yoga sessions or, or maybe uh, musical sessions with the, with, with the patients and their families. And this can really be stress relieving during these COVID days. And while a patient is taking a treatment, sometimes elimination of patient worries regarding product authentication, authentication is also important. I know that this issue may be applicable for, for our part of the world where uh, counterfeit products or lookalike products, these are some issues. And product authentication, authentication issues can be addressed with, a, with the help of a simple technology. And next, I will say that I know we have a session today on how new product development can address patients' needs. Still briefly, I want to say that pharma companies who are focused with R&D can even start from there because product development is also very important to start thinking about the patient first. Instead of viewing the patients as statistics, pharma can track individual patient journeys <clears throat> patient actually think about the size or shape of, of a medication, taste of a medication. They think about the side effects of medication and the patients want to have a good night's sleep. So the mindset you want the patient first before you do anything else. And this patient centricity actually starts with patient insights. So I have seen a lecture regarding patient insights and to explain patient insights in a better way, now I will switch to a bit different topic. How do we learn? We all learn at three different levels. All of us learn at three different levels, intellectual, related, and experiential. So these three levels of learning uh, apply to everything. For example, when we were younger, much younger, we knew about children, right? and we read about children. Uh, so uh, this learning about children, it is the intellectual level of learning. And the next level, when you see your friends are getting children, it is getting more real. And it is the second level of experience that is called related experience. But nothing comes as close as to the third level when you are actually holding your children, staying up at night. And this learning is the learning with experience. As I said, that uh, these three levels of learning can be, can, can be applied to everything. Like you can read a book about driving a car, that is intellectual learning, and you can actually sit in somebody's car to learn driving, that is related learning, and you can actually drive a car, that is the learning by experience. And it is the same in health and disease. Let me share an example with you. So in this slide, you can see the CT scan film of lungs. You can see the massive ground glass opacities in all the lobes of both lungs, especially in the right lung completely affected and left lung, all the lobes are also affected. So maybe this is, the, this is a case of um, peak stage of COVID pneumonia. So what I'm trying to say that this patient knows the pain of breathing difficulties. He knows what is air hunger. He knows the importance of lung rehabilitation program. 
Now think about this patient example from our pharma industry perspective. The lung disease, so we, the pharma, from our pharma industry perspective, the lung disease details or a product portfolio manager, when he, when he or she is dealing with uh, uh, chronic lung diseases, the lung disease details and the statistics that is giving him or her the learning from, from intellectual level, that is intellectual level of learning. And in this case, doctors are at level two. That means once we from the pharma industry, we are interacting with the doctors, uh, we are getting actually a related level of the learning because doctors, they didn't experience the disease. But think, if we don't get the patient insight, we are actually missing the most impactful and insightful experience of the disease. So what I'm trying to say with this example, that I'm actually trying to relate with chronic lung disease conditions. So these kind of patients are real patient experience experts, a disease experience expert. They live 24 seven with a condition and there is nobody in the world who knows better than these persons uh, regarding these diseases. So if your company's marketing team for, for, uh, for the respiratory portfolio, if they have close engagement uh, with the patients suffering from chronic lung diseases or patient organizations, so what they can do, they can, uh, uh, while they are strategizing and designing their strategy for any molecule to fight chronic lung diseases like uh, COPD or asthma or, or pulmonary fibrosis, these patients should be the first point to check on. And that's the way to create happier stories. And that's the, that's the actually uh, reach for where we all should be. So I'm trying to say that pharma industry should focus, uh, should move their focus from modifying disease or controlling disease to, to quality of life, to living with the disease. Besides doctors, patients also should be our, should be our focus. Of course, doctors will be working with us. They are definitely a very important part of our team, but people living with the disease should be focused at the center of the team. And I'm sure within our traditional pharmaceutical company, these patient-centric approach can generate great, well, great, great, great value for our industry. So I'll give another example, which is at the final stage of a patient's journey, the recovery stage. Uh, or like once a patient, he or she gets recovered. Let's say uh, a blood cancer patient is in the stage of a remission. Usually what happens during the course of a cancer treatment, a whole network of people surrounds the patients and patients are supported. And as soon as the patients turn into remission, the people who, are, who were surrounding them may not be available around the patients. So what happens, the patients feel alone. They don't know where to turn. And we may think, from our industry perspective that these patients have already been on our drugs, so we are not going to get anything else out of, out of this. But uh, from today's learning and from today's uh, insights and the learning we are getting regarding patient centricity, I think it makes sense that we would invest here. Because along the patient journey, we need to really support the people when, even when they are, they are in remission. Uh, I can say that the motivational stories of conquering cancer will give the feeling to a patient that yes, I'm a cancer warrior and I'm not alone in my journey forward. So looking at our journey in terms of patient centricity, we may focus mostly, actually nowadays we are focusing when mostly a patient is sick, but through today's learning, we are looking at the entire journey of a patient knowing that he or she is a person more than a patient. So I have tried to share a few examples uh, with all of you, how we pharma companies can create delight uh, at different stages of a patient journey. And I do think that transparency is the area uh, that's most important. Uh, actually, that's how we can understand patients better. We need to listen to the patients. We need to communicate with the patients directly and by fulfilling the patient's needs and by developing the brands the patients can depend on. Ultimately, we, the pharma company, we can become a trusted partner in the patient's daily lives. And that trust has to come from your home first. When your child or your grandchild becomes a patient or becomes sick, will you advise your brand? 
And here, I would like to share a video clip of the founder chairman of SKF. So let's listen from an honoree of the Oslo Business for Peace Award, the founder chairman of SKF. The product that we produce, would I give it to my child? In my case, would I give it to my grandchild? If you can do that and you do that, then you know you're producing quality. If you are unable to do that and give it to your own family members, then you have no business producing it or selling it to the customers who buy in good faith. So quality, quality, quality should never, never, never be compromised. It's a trust that you are trading in. And that trust has to be always honored. Awesome, fantastic message, uh, Dr. Mujahid. Thank you, thank Most you. Most basic of what we are doing today. Will, will I uh, give it to a family member of my own before even getting into this business or taking a job of such company. Uh, perfect message, uh, Dr. Mujahid. Thank you, Dr. Swati. That's what actually, exactly that's what I'm trying to say. So uh, this trust is the ultimate, ultimate key. And uh, you cannot do anything without the trust. And I think our keynote speaker, Jill, has also mentioned that without trust, we cannot be engaged. Patients want an open, transparent relationship, and that's not for a single point of time. That trusted relationship has to be sustained for a longer period of time. They want to be treated with due respect and compassion, just as we would like, we would like to be treated if we were patients. And ultimately, it's about improving the patient experience and outcome. So the summary of my topic is always to begin with the patient, not the solution. What are the patient's needs? And what are the patient's needs we are actually trying to address? And once we understand the need, once we can create right solutions to the patients or to the healthcare pro professionals, that's our, that should be our way forward. Actually, in our part of the world, uh, uh, we have also learned from the previous two speakers, this path of creating delight in patient's journey is actually a journey. So from some point we'll have to start and I really hope that gradually we'll get there. Let us not continue what we are always doing at this moment and we, we need to take a stop and we need to need to measure that the impact that is meaningful to thousands or millions of patients. And before I conclude, I also want to um, um, share a comment from, uh, it is such a coincidence that our our keynote speaker, she mentioned about a comment, uh, about a quote and, and our next speaker, Mr. Mr. Sanjeev, she, he also mentioned about a quote that medicine is for the pe people, it is not for the profit. So I'm also sharing a story from my, from my organization, from SK Pharmaceuticals, which is exactly focusing the, the same, same actually concept that med medicine actually is for the people. So what happened during the darkest era of COVID pandemic, the CEO of SKF, she encouraged our team, the entire SKF team, that we would try our best to manufacture any drugs that emerge to fight COVID-19. You may be aware that Bangladesh is an LDC country, and as an LDC country, we are allowed to manufacture and produce any patented drug as per WTO strips agreement. So based on our continued research and our discussion with the medical scientists, the SKF team shortlisted few molecules, including remdesivir. And on 8th May, 2020, last year on 8th May, SKF officially announced the completion of all the manufacturing steps of remdesivir injection, the brand Remivir, as the first ever remdesivir generic in the world, just one week after remdesivir got emergency use authorization for, for the treatment of COVID patients. 
So the whole motto of the company was to serve the humanity. And not once we thought about profitability. The CEO even said that if Remdesivir would not get regulatory approval, we would write off the entire development expenses. Ultimately, this single uh, approach of supporting the thousands of COVID patients redefined the image of uh, SKF, not only in Bangladesh, but also in a global scale. Okay. Most importantly, Amazing. we could support, thank you, sir. We could support thousands of patients across 32 countries in the world during this darkest time of the century. And once you could win the hearts of people, once you could manage to create delight in the path of patient's journey, business ultimately follows. And let us put our efforts to make the industry more patient-centric. It will ultimately improve our company reputation, your brand reputation, our brand reputation, and ultimately business. So maybe you cannot change the entire company today, but your little initiatives can shake things up. I know we have many future industry leaders from South Asian and the Southeast Asia, many Southeast Asian countries with us today. For you, I have a very simple message to share. Put your personal signature, your fingerprint in your job so that once you are done with your career, you can look back and maybe you can tell your grandchildren that how you have personally changed the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Mujahid, for a, a message which resonates and which will keep resonating even after the summit is over. This was a very wonderful message. You also gave us a theory, uh, you, you know, example of how in acute segment a company did patient centricity. You, you launched the generic invisible. That is again an activity which comes related to patient centricity. So thank you so much, Dr. Mujahid. Uh, thank you. <laughs> we have uh, comments coming up. Wonderful message, sir. We need, we need remdesivir in India. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me, if any relevant question is there, I'll take up. Yeah, the one I would like to make one small statement. And uh, one powerful statement which uh, Dr. Mujahid has made, patients should be first treated as a person or human being. I find that statement to be, I mean, a very, very, very powerful statement. And uh, this is what all the pharma marketers should keep in mind. Treat the patient first. I mean, the doctors, why only pharma companies? Treat the patient first as a human being and a person. Thank you so much, Dr. Pujai. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It's an honor. It's about human centricity first. And then we can call anyone patient. So a lot of congratulations and excellent questions. A question, how do we increase? Okay, how, so how would we be able to tackle these real world concerns uh, from HCPs? Okay, the question, I'll take up the single question. So the idea of patient education app provided to doctor is great idea, but would a HCP believe, missing the question, give me a moment. Would the SCB believe a uh, 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 app coming from a pharma company? Yeah, actually, uh, uh, so, yes. Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Swati. Yeah, this was the question. So, the idea of patient education app provided to doctors is a great idea, but would a HCP believe or trust in the app provided by a pharma company? So, I think uh, uh, again, it's a it's a matter of trust. It is our responsibility to gain the trust from the HCPs. Because once the healthcare practitioner or the healthcare provider, once he or she is dealing with particularly the chronic chronic diseases, so he the doctor knows that uh, once he actually um, sees or he gives visit to a patient, that is not the end of the story. It is not like that, okay, once the patient finishes the visit and he says goodbye to the patient, that's not the end of the story because the patients who are living with chronic diseases, once he or she is uh, at his, his or her home, they are living with the disease conditions. So if we from pharma companies, if we can provide a solution to the patient, to the doctor, that he can remain engaged with the patient, he can, he can give the necessary uh, knowledge regarding the disease, necessary knowledge regarding the medication, even the necessary knowledge regarding the lifestyle modifications, I think the doctor will ultimately remain, um, remain thankful to the pharma companies. And it's a process of engagement among pharma companies, patients, and uh, the doctors. Right, so not to overdo it, but you have to do it. That is Thank what you. I get, yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mujahid, for uh, your one wonderful more presentation. Question from uh, Prashant Minan, sir, has posted one question. Can you please? Okay. Please, Satish, if you can read the question. Uh, question is, as the head of the company, how much percentage of promo would you find is important to under invest in patient related activities in today's context i will give the answer uh, in a way that as i mentioned that uh, i'll be very honest with you i'll be very honest with this question uh, i had a detailed discussion with vivek sir regarding this issue so patient centricity even i'm also learning from today today's discussion it's a process it's a journey i believe it's not only in bangladesh uh, it's applicable even to some extent in india as well we are uh, we are still in the learning phase. So I will not mention any particular percentage of my promo budget. What I will say that it's a journey. Let us start from some point and gradually, ultimately we'll be able to reach the hearts of thousands and millions of patients. Beautiful. Thank you, sir. Beautiful response. Thank you, sir. Response. Thank Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Mirjahid. And uh, we are now moving to the next speaker. We, we are really indebted to you for a wonderful motivating presentation, giving us ideas and the patient journey to touching upon that. Thank you. Uh, 